G'day, it's Dan Beeston from MacTuts Plus, and today we're going to be looking into options for adding metadata to our GarageBand projects. Now, as you can see, I've almost finished my podcast here. Uh, it's sounding pretty good. Hello and welcome to Handlebars, a podcast for moustache wearers and moustache aficionados. Brilliant. I'm very happy with that. I just want to move the musical sting up to the end. Move that in there. And I'll just close up the end of it. This little purple arrow defines the end of your track. You'll notice that it moves back automatically, but when I move that in, it doesn't enclose it automatically. So I'll just move that to the end. Otherwise, I'd end up with a couple of seconds of silence at the end of my track. All right, that's ready to go. I can save it. And then I want to export it to the disk. Now, by default, GarageBand exports as an AAC file, but not everyone can use those, so I prefer to export mine as an MP3. Now, because it's a podcast, I don't really need particularly high quality. In fact, I can drop it all the way down to 56 kilobytes per second and switch it to mono. That leaves a very tiny file indeed. So, I can export that, and I'll export that to my documents folder, my podcast episodes, and the export directory, and save. Now, if I go to that directory, I can find that file. It's an MP3. Now, if I double-click on it, it'll open in iTunes. Wonderful. Now, in order to get metadata onto it, I want to click on it, Right click and get info. Here we've got all the information we need. We can set the title of the episode. Episode one, waxing my tash. The artist, that's me. Now the album generally stands in for the name of the podcast. And this podcast is called Handlebars. And the composer is also me. Now, in comments, we can mention what we've been doing in this episode. So, wonderful. Now, what other options have we got in here? You notice down here that GarageBand always exports as music. If you wanted to put this podcast file straight into your podcast directory so that you could listen to it, you could set that to podcast. This is really useful for if you download a handful of audio files off the internet and you want to set them up to listen to them as podcasts. You just click podcast and then that will show up under your podcasts. And if you import them all at the same time, they'll all end up under the same heading. But we don't want that. We want to leave that as music. Now, we haven't got any artwork here either. And you could add your illustration like that. Or you could simply grab it and drop it in. Or, see this little button here, will actually show you the artwork of whatever you're looking at. And it's nice and fast just to drag that in, like so. Now, if you right-click and show in the Finder, it'll show your MP3. All metadata up and ready to go. But that takes an awful lot of time. I think that we can speed that process up a bit. Because I make podcasts all the time, it often has the same information in it. The same image, the same artist. It's only really the title and the content that changes. So I can actually set that using GarageBand. First up, we're going to make a new track. It's a podcast track. And this is where you can find most of the metadata options. Click on the Info button and we can see everything we want here. We can put in episode two. Combs and waxes. 
the artist, Dan Beeston. The composer is Dan Beeston. Now you'll notice the parental advisory here. If you've got particularly nasty language in it, you can click explicit, but it's not going to be read by iTunes. A little quirk of GarageBand that it seems to export some metadata that doesn't get read anywhere. But here in the description, Now don't forget to drag your album artwork in and set the episode's artwork. Now if you really wanted to, you could also drag in artwork and URLs into this track here. And if you exported it as an AAC file, then that would all be linked up and attached via iTunes. But we're still interested in MP3s, so we're not going to worry about those extra functions. Now have you noticed that there's anything missing? That's right, the album name isn't available to us here. So we'll go to Preferences, go to My Info, and we'll change the album name to Handlebars, the name of our podcast. We'll save that. And now we're going to export the podcast to disk. We want to save it as an MP3 at a custom audio setting, 56 kilobytes per second, and so it's nice and small, and export it. Now, this is a warning that says that uh, enhanced podcasts are only supported when you're using AAC, not MP3. But that's all right. We'll continue on. And we'll export it over the top of the last one. Replace. Now, we go and have a look at it. There's our file. Open it in iTunes. There it is. But our title's wrong. And there's no artwork there. It seems that whenever GarageBand exports an MP3, it strips certain elements from it. So how are we going to overcome that? Let's go back to GarageBand. And what we're going to do is we're going to send the podcast to iTunes. Now, if you find that your details here don't match up with your details here, it could be that it's still getting information from the preferences under My Info. It will always take that information from the last thing edited. So just go over here and hit enter a couple of times on your artist and composer. This should update it. The thing is, what we're doing is we're exporting an AAC file and then we're going to convert it later. Now, if you want to be converting an AAC file, which is a lossy format, to an MP3, which is also a lossy format, you're going to get some file degradation. So what we're going to do is we're going to export this at a fairly high quality but we also want to export it as a mono track. So we'll go into custom, set it to 256 kilobytes a second, and set it as mono. So we share it. Hello and welcome to Handlebars, a podcast for moustache wearers and moustache aficionados. Okay, so it starts automatically playing in iTunes. It's got the right title. It's got the right image, and now we want to convert it to an MP3. Now, by default, if you right click, you'll probably see Create AAC version down here. That's not what we want. So go to Preferences, go to your Import Settings, and you'll probably see this. What we're going to do is we're going to change that to MP3. We're going to customize that to a nice low quality. Here you want to set your bitrate to 64 kilobits a second. If, if you go down to 48 kilobits a second, it starts to sound a little bit tinny and echoey. So leave it there, and that's a really nice middle ground for a really low file size and a decent quality. And make sure you set your channels to mono. Then right click, create an MP3 version, and there's our MP3 version. Now, if we have a look in our finder, we'll see our files. They exist under iTunes, iTunes Media, Music. Now, they exist under the artist name, which is Dan Beeston, and the album name, which is Handlebars. Here we have our AAC version with the file name M4A, and we have our newly created MP3 file.
Now the thing is, I don't want these files in iTunes. I don't want them buried in this file structure. I want my newly created MP3 file to go to where I store my podcast episodes in its upload directory. I'm also not really that happy with the file naming structure. These are quite bulky file names and I want to have them all named one after the other depending on which episode they are. So there is a way around this using folder actions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start Automator. I'm going to start a new folder action. And I'm going to choose this album name as the folder. So whenever an MP3 file lands in this folder, I want it to be affected by the action. Now, be mindful. If you change your artist name in GarageBand, it's going to create a whole new artist name and a whole new album folder, and it's not going to have the folder action attached to it. Just be mindful of that if you're ever changing the artist. Now, under Automator, what we first want to do is only have MP3 files affected. So we're going to filter the finder items. We're going to get the file extension when it is MP3. The next thing we do is we want to run a shell script, and this is going to be a Perl script. Don't panic, it's going to look a bit overwhelming, but I'm going to guide you through it. So we're going to set it as a Perl script. We're going to get an argument passed to it. And grab our script. Now, this is pretty easy to follow. What happens is that the file name is sent through as the first item in an array called argv. Now it's a zero based array, so the first item is number zero. We put some quotes on it to set it as a string called old file. Then we copy that string to another one called new file. We also want the path for where we want this file to go. So I go to documents, podcast episodes, upload. And then I drag my path in. Make sure you've got the final slash or else it'll get confused. Now the new file starts off as the file name and this is where it gets overwhelming. This is a regular expression and knowing how to use regular expressions is beyond the scope of this tutorial but I'll guide you through what's happening here. It starts a search and replace. It looks for all characters, as many as possible, until it finds a special character called slash. And then it sees a capital E, a P, and then a special character called space. So this relates to the name of our MP3 file and where it belongs in the path. It goes past all the directories until it finds EP space and then it looks for a number. It... So that's the number and it looks for as many digits as possible until it stops being digits. Now this is in brackets. What this means is it's being saved to another variable called $1 that you see down here. So we put another slash in there to designate what it will be changed into. It doesn't have to be changed into anything because what we need has already been saved. And then it's set as global. So that gives you a very basic idea of what's happening in this file. Next, what we do is we add a couple of leading zeros. Because we don't want 1, 2, 3. We want 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3. So that it all lines up nicely in iTunes if it's ever sorted by name. We get zero, zero, and then the number, and then we remove all but the last three digits. This just puts leading zeros onto it. And so anything up to 999 will be supported. Now, we add our file name to it. I want my files to be called handlebars. Then I want the number, and then I want it set as an MP3 file again, which it is. And then this line here puts the path on it, so it shows it where to save it to and what name to save it to. Then it renames the current MP3 file 
to the new location and the new name. So let's save that. Save it as move mp3. And now when we go to iTunes, we'll delete that mp3 file. And we will right click, create an mp3 version, show it in the finder. You'll see the mp3 file. Then the folder action will activate. It'll rename the file and take it to my upload directory. Wonderful. So now, when I go to GarageBand and I want to do my second episode of my podcast, I can take Handlebars 001. I can save it. Save it into our GarageBand. Change the episode title number three. The artist stays the same. The composer stays the same. The parental advisory stays the same. The artwork stays the same. The description changes. We save it again, making sure that it's a new file, 003. And of course, we'd also change our content. And once that's all done, we'll send the podcast to iTunes. Double check that that's all correct. Share it. It'll open automatically in iTunes. Hello and welcome to Handlebars. I to... Then we will create an MP3 version. And if that folder action is working correctly, it'll move out of there and into there at 003. So there you go. That's some of the frustrations of setting up metadata in GarageBand and ways to overcome them. This has been Dan Beeston for MacTuts Plus. Hello and welcome to Handlebars, a podcast for moustache wearers and moustache aficionados. In this week's episode, we'll be chatting to long-term moustache wearer.